Pokemon is a titan of a franchise with a very loyal fan base, but it is something that for a very long time was shrouded in mystery for me. And somehow I always felt like I was out of the loop when it came to talking about it and stuff like that, because for that long time, I wasn't even allowed to interact with it. I had my first interaction with the franchise when I was in high school with Pokemon Go. So when I heard that they were going to be making a proper game for the Nintendo Switch, I was absolutely ecstatic. Finally, a mainline Pokemon game I can get into, I thought. Well, it ended up being the Let's Go games. So while I did play Let's Go Eevee, I didn't play it for long and just kind of felt like something was off. But this year saw the release of Pokemon Sword and Shield, and with a little bit of help from my friend, I quickly found myself eager to try a true mainline Pokemon game day and day when it was released. And while not perfect, I'm very glad I did. So today on That Game Review Show, I'm Terrell, and I want to share with you my experience with my first Pokemon game, Pokemon Sword for the Nintendo Switch. I will say, while I was waiting for the game to come out, I got a little worried. The amount of criticism that the game was getting online really started to make me wonder if this was the best way for me to get into a Pokemon game. I started wondering, maybe do I need to go back to a previous game? But I realized after the game came out, I really had nothing to fear. Like I said, it has its problems. It's not a perfect game, but I had a lot of fun with it. Anyway, the game starts with a very common opening where you are in your house and your friend and rival for the game, Hop, comes in and starts talking about how his older brother, the Pokemon champion, Leon, has come home and has brought some things for the two of you. As you might have guessed, Leon has brought you your starter Pokemon, and this time around you have your three options of Scorbunny, Grookey, and Sobble. A uh, quick side note, if I mispronounced any of those, I'm not very good at pronouncing anything, so suck it, nerds. After picking one of these things and going through what I've been told is a very common re-teaching tutorial of Pokemon, where you learn how to catch and how to battle, you're well on your way into the game proper. That meaning that you and Hop are off to become the next champion, starting by building a team, getting your Dynamax bands, and heading off to fight all the gym leaders. But along the way, you get to see the bigger selling point of Sword and Shield, the open areas. This is where the player can really spend a lot of their time, especially in the early game. This is where you can really come to build your team as well. I personally found these areas to be very interesting, but also kind of underwhelming at the same time. The open areas around the Galar region, when I first heard about the game, I thought they were going to somehow, some way, like, do what they did to Breath of the Wild, but do it to Pokemon. Completely kind of turn it on its head and taking this familiar franchise, just pumping in this one idea and truly making it something different. And that's where a lot of my underwhelmed fe feelings, like, come from. But I may have just set the bar a little high when I thought about it in my head when I first heard about them. But I find these so interesting because it leads for a new opportunity for the direction of future games. It also allows you to have different types of Pokemon towards the very beginning and makes your teams a lot more fleshed out and interesting. Because as far as I could tell in my playing of the game along the normal routes, you have areas where more Pokemon are specific, whereas here it seems like uh, it's a lot more variety based and a lot more, I don't know, open. <laughs> At first I was almost intimidated by the game, and I can't really tell you for the life of me why, but this led me to uh, feel like I wasn't prepared for any of the first few gyms, but I actually ended up finding out, of course, it's all in my head, and really, I had nothing to worry about. The game is fairly easy, as it should be, because it's kind of marketed towards kids and fans of Pokemon in general, who already know everything, 
but generally it just takes a little bit of learning about team balancing and what effectiveness some Pokemon have against others, and then it just kind of becomes almost a cycle of fighting a few Pokemon before the gym and making sure you know what kind of team you need, putting that team together kind of quickly, and then once it's put together you can just take on the gym. That's fine. And for new players like myself, that's, you know, the biggest hurdle is coming up learning which types are better suited to take on other types. But once you kind of have that down, it's the only, like, hurdle you have to jump at every gym. Veterans of the game are probably fine, they understand what works against what, and they just kind of fly through the game with a relative speed. However, I was interested to find out through one of my friends that uh, helped me get into the game that these parts of the gym that I liked the most are actually new. These are the gym challenges. I honestly felt like I enjoyed them so much more with just these little, of course they're not too hard, but challenging enough, well, challenges. It gave all the gyms like their own extra bit of personality, I felt, as well as made going through the extra fights of, like, they're not, I think they're gym leaders, uh, more interesting as you went through, effectively, little puzzles to get to them, and then you got to go on and fight the overall gym leaders. Uh, and I really liked this idea. I f am surprised they didn't do it sooner. Adding in these little puzzles just, you know, of course there are some that are better than others, but the little bit of personality it adds to all of these gyms just makes it feel like, you know, they're crafted by the leader to be like a true gauntlet of making sure you are worthy enough to come in here and face me, and I've always just kind of liked that mentality. Of course, um, some notable ones that really stick out as very big with personality are the grass and the fairy types. They come to mind right away, hurting the Wooloos and going into the battles and then just kind of like having to answer quick fire questions in like an audition sense. It was fascinating to me and I just really liked it. Uh, while on the ideas of gyms and gym leaders, uh, I thought that all the gym leaders designs were very different and the variation really made them stand out and of course that helped the overall gym not feel the same every time. One of the more unfortunate things I missed out on in my playthrough was the camps. My friend loved camps. Found them to be an amazing inclusion and in getting to play with their Pokemon directly uh, and even being able to make them curry. These things can either completely heal Pokemon or even give them more XP to level them up a bit. And there's a really cool feature that I haven't been able to use but I'm trying to build this with my Pokemon so I can use it. If you build a strong enough bond with your Pokemon, they get to a point where if they take a lot of damage to where they should faint, they won't. They will stay at one health. And I think that's awesome. It's uh, like a disappointing system of like, I don't want to disappoint the per you know, my friend kind of thing. And that just sounds amazing. That sounds so cool. I did end up finally starting to spend some of the times in the camps, and I really liked it. I thought it was just as cool as my friend did. Uh, my favorite part was being able to play with the Pokemon, you know, have, playing catch, uh, playing with the other one and having them attack, and just having them come up and me being able to talk to them. It was really something special. Now I don't know where many people stand on this, but I feel like it would be nice going forward if Game Freak took the time to add in more animations into the fights. I feel it would make them a lot more interesting to watch. Because the battle system, while really well done, I just feel like the fun starts to feel samey and isn't as interesting as you go throughout the game. While I like how the combat is quick and snappy and making the fights easy to just kind of pick up, put down, it only takes a few minutes, so you never really stop exploring, and that helps with the overall kind of casual play style. The quick battles make the game super easy, but I just feel like I would be more engaged if they 
added a bit more to them in the visual department, in the terms of the moves and the animations. It's a tall order to ask for, but that's just my personal opinion. Honestly, I understand where people are coming from with the fact that textures aren't as good as they could have been, but I feel like that the game does look alright. They, yeah, could have done better with more high-res looking textures, but I think it looks clean and there isn't too much to complain about. The game looks fine, and the same goes for the music design. There's nothing to write home about with it really, it's just, it looks fine and it sounds fine. And overall, it does a good job at what it's set out to do, and that's be a Pokemon game. Even with everything that people have been upset about with this game, I found myself as the new person to the series to have a lot of fun with it and really find myself wanting to come back and play the game continuously now that I'm almost done with it at the time of this recording. I'll probably finish it by the time this goes up and I'll probably continue playing and collecting more Pokemon and doing that stuff at least for a little while after this is done. I think this was a perfect point for me to jump into the franchise, and I'm really glad I did. I'm looking forward to see where these games go from here, and I really look forward to playing Pokemon in the future for many years to come. Thank you guys for watching another video here on That Game Review Show. Oh, damn, has it been a hard bit getting this video out for you guys. I wanted to make sure I took my time trying to get all my thoughts out on paper, and now that I've done that, I should be able to get this out to you. I apologize for the delay, and I hope you guys did enjoy it. It is a lot of fun getting to play Pokemon for the first time properly. But I gotta get going, I gotta get writing on my next script, because that is January 2nd, and I'm actually going to be reviewing Fire Emblem Three Houses strategy game of 2019 so says the game awards so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time